Hello everybody, my name is Thomas Hübel. I'm delighted to sit here with Sergio Baroni. Um, a therapist, a healer, spiritual mentor, and a man with a very lovely depth of listening and like a spark of pinpointing essential places, questions, uh, and revelations in life. And a wonderful partner for our interactions. I enjoy our communication a lot. There's a very lovely flow and an inspirational space that opens up when we meet that I enjoy very much. And we are going to talk about uh, maybe about the nature of humanity and the nature of our experience and how we are all doing our best to grow into better versions of ourselves and compassionate with our path. Many people that are coming um, for psychotherapy or personal healing, energy healing, have, have a sense that initially what drives them obviously is personal pain, emotional pain, loss, relationship pain. And it seems to me that so often people are living sort of having accepted a very small sense of themselves right. and tending to kind of run along the surface of life and having this sense of almost like a demand, entitlement, that, that there should be something better for them, but not necessarily wanting to really dig into the, the foundation of themselves. Right. That, that there doesn't seem to be enough vigor, enough intense desire to really know the truth of myself. Right. There's more of a sense of, I just want to feel better right. so I can go back to being comfortable. Right. What, what do you say to um, someone like that? How, do you, how, would you, how would you sort of interact with someone like that? It always depends who is the someone, mm. you know, because it depends what can be heard. But the most important thing, I think, is that there is a lot of avoidance of the intensity of either comfort or discomfort. And as long as I am in this tension that I want to feel comfortable, and I, or I'm avoiding the beauty and the intensity of joy, ecstasy, power, or I'm avoiding the intensity of pain, of anger, of the fire of whatever we call is negative, you know. If I am still in this polarity, I will always need to avoid part of my reality because it will point to this place. And I think many people are not yet either aware or willing to go beyond comfort and discomfort. That, I, that my commitment is to this present moment and to life. And I'm not anymore interested to be just the mere continuation of my story. Because I, I, tend, I like to stay in the habit of my story, of what I know, and how I can stay a bit more on the side of the comfort, and I will do a lot to not be pushed to the other side. And I think that this is, is a very big topic, that we can encourage more and more people to really embrace the moments that are very beautiful and the moments that are very painful. And if I'm prepared to hold both in my awareness and to feel both as deeply as I can, this is the beginning of freedom. And if I, because this means that I will not anymore avoid the people, the situations, the the intensities and experiences that will point to the places that I don't like. You know, I will keep exploring you if I feel that I reject you, that something in me wants to go away from you because you don't seem to be comfortable for me. And I will explore you if I feel 
the deepest love and intensity towards you. But if I don't want both of them, I will often find people, situations and circumstances that I will try to avoid. I will not get up, even if I have the impulse, and stand in front of 500 people and give a speech if I'm afraid that I could be ashamed, that I could not know what I want to say, that I, you know, that people will laugh at me. So I will tend to avoid the discomfort. But it's not that I want to avoid the situations even. I don't want to, to feel what I feel according to these moments that I don't like. And once I understand this, that I just want to avoid my own discomfort most of the time, and therefore I stay a small, separate version of myself, then this is the beginning of the understanding of freedom. And I think all the pioneers, they had a drive to, a kind of a restless drive to explore new territories, and they were prepared to get the criticism, to get the discomfort of not being liked, of being rejected, of being... But therefore, they could also progress into these territories because they were willing or they needed somehow to face these consequences. And I think we all need to be kind of heroes of our own consciousness because it takes a lot of courage sometimes to face uh, life fully. Thank you. That, that was uh, wonderfully put. And in fact, it, it leads me it leads right into the, the next question and the, the, the exploration that I wanted to go into with you, which relates to that, that spirit of the spiritual warrior, the hero within us. Right. That, that, that power, that dimension within us that, that is undaunted, relentlessly willing to sacrifice everything for the sake of right. love, truth, or the, the love of truth or the how do we pursue that sense of what is most real and what is most how do we stand up to that which appears false or that which right. appears as negating some sense of ourselves or life right. that we become so passionate in the desire to protect life to uphold life to nourish life to sustain life and and I, I hear you saying that that is, in a sense, to me it's, it's kind of like an archetype that we need to somehow allow it to embody us, surrender to it. Right. Would you, would you describe it like that? In a way, yes. I think it's a possibility in all of us. Mm. And at the same time, I think we need also a lot of encouragement because we are living in a culture that actually tells us something else. So a lot of young people get impressions of distracting themselves, you know, needing a lot of entertainment, needing a lot of distracting habits in order to reduce the intensity. And I think we will need to f support in ourselves, but also in the context around us, and the context around us needs to support in ourselves this place that is growing in courage. Mm. You know, and some people seem to have it by birth. You know, there are some people that are driven by a kind of a restlessness. And often in the spiritual scene, it's a lot about relaxation. But some people, yeah. they have an urge, they feel, they, they don't stop. You know, whatever happens, they don't stop. There is something that drives them forward. And if you meet difficulties, you meet them. And if, you, if there is pain, you meet it. And if there is highly pleasure, high pleasure, you meet. But you move. You know, life has a kind of a restless quality to, to explore itself and to really dig and go deeper into the mystery. And some people seem to have a, a very strong drive. And with other people... It is that when they see or when they feel people with a very strong drive, it, the fire turns on as well. Mm -hmm. And I think if I have the commitment that I want to see your light shine in its highest possibility, and if you are interested in the same in me and we in others, and this is my commitment, even if I feel intimidated by your highest light, 
which is you know it's nice when it's nice, but it's when my envy comes up and then my 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 will to pull you down because I want to be bigger than you are and all these dynamics mm -hmm. of human beings when they come up. Yeah. Often it's not so easy. It's easy as a fairy tale. But in real life, we are faced suddenly when somebody shines, then I start to feel the, all the places where I'm holding back this shining. Mm -hmm. And then I first try to turn it down there in order to mm -hmm. allow myself to rest in the smallness that I accepted. Mm -hmm. But if I cannot turn the outside down, then I need to face my own shadow of holding back, of suppression, of... So we need to find a culture that supports potential. Because the more people will shine, the harder it will be not to be a hero. Not to be, you know, to, to make one's life of something that is bigger than comfort and discomfort. And I think if we manage to create such a we, such a culture, and this will, this will start to grow and, and, and take more and more space in society, then it will be so good by the time that it will attract much more energy, much more awareness mm -hmm. from the current mainstream that is often based on numbing oneself, you know, being numbed by entertainment, by all kinds of things. Yes. Yeah. Self, given that for much of my life I've been aware that on some level I was in a state of resistance, right. resisting life. Right. Resisting some aspect of the bigger, the bigger self, the bigger we, the bigger self that I'm a part of, and the fears that would arise, the shame that arises around that. Right. And then watching how, at times, the ego can come in and try to take over as the narcissistic shell. Right. 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 That part that just wants to be shiny and bright and all right. get attention, and and so many of us can get stuck, even many spiritual teachers, right, can get stuck at that level of, in a sense, there is passion there, there is desire to do, to be all that one can be, but the ego can subsume it. Right. The copyright department takes ownership of the light. Right. And that's very important. You mentioned a very important point. So how do we, what do we do with that? The important thing is, that many people misunderstand the shining as the ego. You know, mm -hmm. the shining is not the ego. The shining is the driving life force that wants to expand. The copyright department that says, this is me, and what it achieves belongs to me, this is the thing that we need to be aware of. Because there's many people in the spiritual field that suddenly start thinking, oh, if I'm shining, then this is just what my ego wants. But I, I don't think it's true. I think the shining and the light and the, 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 the excellence of humanity is very, very beautiful. This is the beauty of the tree of life that's flowering. This is the beauty of expression of intelligence. But we need to be aware that there's a copyright department that we pay and we hire people to work for this department. And when they come in, we need to be aware. But not aware to dim our light, but to be aware that that when these people enter the living room, we will not reject them, because then it's another part of my ego that rejects the copyright department. We will allow them to walk through our living room, but we will not support them, and we will not fight them. You know, we will not support the tendencies of my ego, get wanting to take ownership of my achievements, my path, how good I am, and all this. In the Tao Te King, there's a sentence that says, and when the master, in this case it's a she, if she finishes her work, she forgets it. So there can be an amazing work in our life. It can take the stage of life. It can be even very famous. If the copyright department doesn't take ownership of it, it's beautiful. It just represents the beauty of the excellence of intelligence of creation and I think this beauty needs to shine the ego is not the shining the ego is the, the part that wants to take ownership the ego is the part that starts falling in love